As we know, when the 2018 season had started, a volcano had been closed and demolished, with that plot of land left empty. But sadly, this wouldn't be the end for the Safari Village part of the park, as in 2019, just one year after removal of volcano, King's Dominion closed the crypt, their hus top spin, due to a decline in ridership. With two of the Safari Village rides closed and an unlikely but rumored third on the way, how can King's Dominion come back from this and earn the spot back on top of the VA Park Wars when BGW is building rides like Pantheon? Well, here's how I can see them doing it. We all know King's Dominion is not in the best place right now. Over the past 10 years, they've only added two new coasters while removing three. That's not that good of a track record when your computer has added four new coasters and removed zero. Now, that's not to say King's Dominion hasn't been adding anything. In fact, they've been improving their park a lot by adding more landscaping, adding much needed flat rides with Delirium in 2015, and recently adding a new kids area to their water park with Coconut Shores in 2021. What King's Dominion really needs is a new standout coaster to fill in the void that Volcano left. Volcano was by far the most iconic coaster at King's Dominion, although some may argue I-305 was. But in the park's eyes, Volcano most definitely was, since it's unique and doesn't scare away the GP like I-305 did. So what we're looking for is a new unique coaster that is intense enough for the coaster enthusiast, but not to the point to where GP won't ride it. Now, I don't think Cedar Fair will add a large-scale B&M to the park, since as of now, King's Dominion is in between the haves and haves nots of Cedar Fair parks. The same can be said about a small scale B&M as well, since for the same price you can get for one of those, you can get a whole lot more with other manufacturers. With that being said, I have come up with some possible options that they may want to go with. Let's start off by talking about what company Cedar Fair still works with. Number one is RMC. Now, there were some rumors that Cedar Fair was no longer working with RMC after the bumper car incident of 2018, but since that was never confirmed, we're just going to assume that they still work with them. While we're on the no longer works with list, let's talk about Intamin. Cedar Fair has had a long history of not working with Intamin over the past 10 years, after I-305 was too intense and the Shoot the Rapids uh, flipping over. But with Velocicoaster doing so well and soon to be Pantheon, I can totally see Cedar Fair wanting a piece of that new gen Intamin pie. Next up we have a newcomer in the Cedar Fair scene, that is Gerslauer. The idea of hang time has just left Cedar Fair fanboys clamoring for an infinity coaster at King's Dominion or Cedar Point. But do I think King's Dominion will get the new record breaking Gerslauer? No I don't. King's Dominion already has a free spin opening up in 2021, but that does lead us to our next option. SNS is also a newcomer of the Cedar Fair Club, with the 2022 edition of King's Dominion's 4D Free Spin, which will give us some interesting options, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. First off, we can get rid of RMC since they just got Twisted Timbers in 2018. We can also get rid of B&M since their rides are so expensive. As for Intamin, I can see King's Dominion getting a mega coaster in the future, but not to replace Volcano, so they're out. That leaves us with two, Gerslauer and SNS. So let's compare their options. For Gerslauer, I can really only see them getting Infinity Coaster since Eurofires don't seem to be that popular anymore. Now, this would be a good replacement. It's a coaster that Busch Gardens doesn't have. Both the GP and enthusiasts love them and they're compact enough so they can easily fit in Volcano spot. The only downside to an Infinity Coaster is that King's Dominion already has a multi-looper with Dominator, Anaconda, Fight of Fear, and Twisted Timbers, and it's also a launch coaster, which we know King's Dominion has plenty of. With that being said, it's still a solid option, just not my pick. My pick is going to have to go towards SNS though. If King's Dominion wanted to get another launch coaster to replace Volcano with, SNS has those as well, and they're probably more forceful than a Gerstler launch anyways. They also offer looping coasters like Max Force, but my pick is going to have to be a cliche SNS launch axis coaster. Now hear me out, a axis would be perfect fit for this park, since the coaster it's a coaster that literally no one has, it's an interesting concept that would be able to replace the launch invert that was Volcano, while also being able to be a traditional sit down coaster as well. 
but most importantly, it'd be an easy one-up to Busch Gardens Pantheon, as it would have everyone's eyes, from enthusiasts freaking out about this new coaster type, to, G to the GP wondering if it's safe for a coaster to flip upside down like that. There are some downsides for it though. Since this is a new model, King's Dominion could end up pulling a hypersonic XLC and having it fail on them since they bought a prototype, but I still feel like the pros outweigh the cons and are worth a risk. Hey, Future Trey here. So, um, while I was recording this, I kind of forgot to mention Mach. So, I'm doing that now. Um, Mach is kind of in the same boat as Gerslauer. Uh, really all they offer are launch coasters, which King's Dominion already has a lot of. But I could see them getting a Mach, uh, Extreme Spinner. That would be a good fit for the park and that could also work in place for uh an axis coaster but for this video we're just going to go with axis because i feel like that's the more interesting option that king's dominion might want to go with i'd like to present to you what i'm calling sector 98 this will be king's dominion's version of area 72 at king's island since King's Dominion's unnamed free spin will most likely be going with a jungle theme, judging by the supports, we're going to make this Sector 98 different. Instead of it being a normal alien research base, this would be an alien research base in the jungle. See what I did there? The whole goal would be to contain a new anomaly that has risen from the ashes of the destruction of Volcano. See how we tied it back together there? That's why the area is called Sector 98, that being the opening year of Volcano. Anyways, the main attraction would be the Axis Coaster, which would be the base's way of trying to contain the anomaly. Think of something along the lines of Nemesis at Alton Towers. But that's not where it stops. For a long time, a complaint of many enthusiasts had been that the Safari Village area is right beside a NASCAR track and a UFO center. And a snowy ride, not to mention that. So to fix this, we're going to retheme I-305 and Avalanche. Avalanche is easy. It can be repainted to a brown color and called something like Mudslide. For I-305, they could go with something like with Park Fans member, name here, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, suggested. This would be a retheme of I-305 from a NASCAR race to a space mission, similar to Orion at Kings Island, further tying these two lands together. I can even see them repainting the coasters, something that's more fitting of this new space theme. But if they don't, that's fine. The red and yellow could still work since it's iconic to the park. That's pretty much it. Of course, this re-theme would bring much needed updates to the shops and restaurants in the area. They could even add a custom soundtrack to really sell the area. But for the rides and stuff, it's mostly just re-theming them and building the new access coaster that will set the park out from any of their competition. If you like this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like. But for now, that's it. See you in the next one.